Today I'm here with Jamie Blanick. She has one of the most inspiring stories I have ever heard. In fact, we just met right now. She's at my house here <laughs> and we just met, but she came so highly recommended by a few people who also had just met her and they were blown away by your story. Um, there's so much more to you than just your story and I'm fully aware of that. Um, first of all, you're from Waco, Texas, right? Yes. Waco is a very popular name. Oh my gosh, I, I know, right? I know, I know. goodness. <laughs> a lot of people know Waco, Texas. Um, and if you're younger and you don't, maybe Google it. But Oh my gosh. That right? doesn't mean that's what she came from. <laughs> you're like, I'm not from that. But anyway, no, that's that's a well-known town in Texas. It is, yes. Um, and you, re how long ago did this experience happen, by the way? My accident yes. was three years ago. It was only three years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so only three years ago, yeah. something mind-blowing and traumatic happened. And do you mind kind of telling us leading up to that and everything, yeah. just everything that happened? Yes. Um, it was February 6th of 2021. And like you said, I'm from Texas. And so I was in Texas and I had been at my brother's house. Um, my whole family was there and we had dinner. And then we were leaving to go to my house. Um, I live with my parents there and my dad left and then I left and then my mom left and it was about 7 50 at night and I came up on a really bad accident so it's um, already dark out it's getting dark yes it, from my memory it was still kind of there was still some light it wasn't like pitch black but it was dark um, and I take this back country highway to get home and so the speed limit's like 70 and I came up on this accident and it had just happened or I saw the very end of it. I don't have any memory really of the accident and what happened after um, but everything's been told to me. Um, it was a Jeep that had tried not to hit a car that pulled out in front of it at this really dangerous intersection. Um, and they wound up hitting this car and then rolling several times. And so there's like debris everywhere. And I slammed on my brakes, put my hazards on, jumped out of the car and went to the vehicle. Um, you're either a person who like jumps to action or like stands on the sideline. Can I just and say that says so <laughs> much about you? Like I'm picturing this, like would mm -hmm. I do that? I'd like to say I would, but would I actually do that? That's huge. Right. right. Yeah. Like you may just stay in your car and call 911 or you may yeah. just keep going. Um, but I'm a person who like, oh my gosh, I have to do something. Um, and so you. I did and I ran up to the Jeep and in the back were two small girls. Um, they were like two and maybe four or five screaming, crying. Oh, I have no gosh. medical like training or background um, and I'm not a mom, but in me i was wanting to help them yeah of course so i was checking them out making sure they weren't bleeding um just trying to calm them down you yeah, know yeah. and one of them was already out of her car seat trying to get into the front of the jeep and the other one was starting to unbuckle and i was telling them that they need to stay in their car seats yeah. that they needed to get back in their car seats i don't know why but i think god like put that in me Totally. To know that that is where they would be the safest because most people would think get them out of the car and move them to the side of the road. But something in me was just like, no, they're safer in their car seats. And so I would put them back in their car seats and I was moving around the vehicle and a car came down the highway and crashed into us. Oh my God. Yeah. You're already at a crash scene and mm -hmm. then another. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was hit and I immediately uh, suffered a traumatic amputation. So I was hit so hard that I lost my right leg and then shattered my whole left leg, broke my pelvis. And the most critical of my injuries is definitely, which is crazy, is um, I had a skull fracture and brain bleeds. So my skull was just like bashed into the ground from when I hit the pavement. Um, I'm very fortunate and blessed because I believe God had this whole thing like set up so that 
I would survive. Um, he definitely did. He did for sure because the only other person that had stopped was coming from the other direction. His name is Scott, and he and I had spoken like when I got to the front of the vehicle as I was moving around. We had like a quick interchange, and then he went to the other car. And as soon as he walked away, that's when I got hit. Um, he immediately went to me and he happens to be an off-duty firefighter EMT. So he has medical training. That is not a coincidence. No, it isn't. No. And he had just moved to the area the month before. Um, he doesn't drive that highway normally, you know? So God put him there to save me. Um, the worst part, I think, for me is the fact that my mom was in the car behind me. Your mom saw this? She saw the whole thing. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So she, um, she saw the car come down the highway and she's like screaming, like begging this person to stop, slow down, something. And they didn't. Um, They just crashed right into us. Uh, But my mom, she got out of her vehicle and she came around the Jeep over to where I was and where Scott was treating me. And she was like, this is my daughter. And he like looks up at her and he's like, this is your daughter. And she said, this is my daughter. Her name is Jamie. So from there, the two of them kept me alive. Because we were far from hospitals, um, it took a while for like ambulances to get there. And Scott actually called 911 while he was like trying to keep me alert and trying to keep me awake um, and from going into shock, right? Uh, he called 911 and he was like demanding a helicopter because he knew that I wouldn't make it if an ambulance tried to take me to a hospital. People don't know this, but ambulances don't carry blood. Helicopters do. I didn't know that. No, that's not. Yeah, I never would have thought that either. But they don't carry blood. And that's what I needed because I was bleeding out from several places. And I had moments to live. Like my mom describes it perfectly. She says that every time my heart was beating, every time it beat, I was winning because my heart's still beating and it means I'm alive. But I was also losing because every time it beat, it was pushing blood from my body. And she said she saw like two rivers of blood just going down into the ditch. Yeah, it's like wild. Also biblical because rivers of blood. So um, Scott demanded a helicopter and they listened to him, thankfully. Um, But ambulances came and they put me in an ambulance and tended to me until the helicopter got there. And then the helicopter um, took me and flew me out. Are you awake of, for this? So I'm awake the whole time, yes. Oh, my gosh. So did you, But I don't you, remember oh, because don't of my remember. head trauma. Okay. Okay. I don't remember any of it. So do, the, do your, did Scott and your mom say anything about you saying that you had lost your leg? Like, like did you know that? So my mom didn't even know, which is very weird. Um, well, there's probably so much blood. and There's like – I don't – yeah, I don't know, honestly, like what – I don't know how she didn't notice I was missing a leg, but Scott knew. He did know. Um, And at this point, like, all these cars have pulled over and people have come out of their homes. And it was a huge scene, like, from a movie. It was insane. Um, And people were just bringing their jackets to me because it's February and it's cold and they were trying to keep me from going into shock and like trying to stop the blood. And so I was covered in all these people's jackets and, um, it was, I mean, it was wild because I didn't expect this, right? Like I'm just going home and I didn't expect my life to change literally in an instant at all. But God planned this. Um, I've learned so much since then about little like God things. Uh, Scott and I have the same birthday, Wow, which is wild, like yeah. really wild. Yeah. Um, the driver of the Jeep who happened to be the girls, their mom's boyfriend, he was driving them. His name is Christian. 
and I was flown in a helicopter um, to the closest level one trauma center in Temple, Temple, Texas. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So all these things. Like he's letting you know, like, I know this is hard, but I'm, I'm here and I'm aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, did anything happen to the little girls or anyone else? They were fine because I put them back in their car seats. I saved them. Oh my goodness. So you're a real hero. You are. I mean, you (laughs) might not say that, but that's, yeah. If that, if those were my two daughters, I'd be thanking you the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their mom is definitely grateful for sure. I, I can't imagine like, I, I have six young children. Yeah. If, oh my gosh, your poor mom. I can't, I if I saw that with my child, like I actually don't even, I think I would pass out. There's just no way. Yeah, I know. That's what gave me like the worst trauma, honestly, was the fact that I put my mom through the worst moment of her life. And I would cry in the hospital. Um, also, God sent the snowpocalypse so that my mom was frozen into the hospital with me and could not leave. Wow. So because it was February of 21, all the hospitals still had like COVID rules and visitation rules. You could only choose one person to be like able to even see you. So my family and friends would stand outside of the hospital. There was a prayer vigil one night where all these people came. I love people. I know, right? I know. But my mom was like, I'm the one. Like, I'm I'm going to be the one making the decisions who can see her and all this. And she got a hotel across the street from the hospital because they didn't know how long I would be there. Um, they thought Meaning, it could be months. Did they think months. you might die or like? Oh, yeah. They didn't think I was going to survive the helicopter ride at all. No, I was moments from death. Like, moments. I took all the blood that the helicopters had. Um, they resuscitated me in the ER and then I went immediately into the OR. Like I was moments from death and my mom got to visit me and see me. But then in Texas, the weather's crazy. It freezes and there was a massive freeze and my mom got frozen into the hospital and she could not leave. Like doctors couldn't get to the hospital. Nurses couldn't leave. And my mom was frozen in. So she was like sleeping on the couch in my room. And I would like wake up every day and just cry because I felt so bad that I put her. That's what you would cry about? Yes. Yes. I didn't cry about the fact that I lost my leg or. You didn't cry about that? No. No. Like I was, I was You're like. amazing. I was ready to like move forward, you know, but I just felt so bad for what I did to my mom. And I didn't know what had happened. I, because I didn't remember the accident for probably two weeks, I didn't even ask what happened. I didn't know. I was too scared to ask because I didn't want to think that it had been my fault. And I didn't want to think. I'm sad that you carried that burden. I did. I did. And then God gave me a memory of me talking to the girls one night in a dream and was I, in a dream. Uh-huh, yeah, I had this dream. And I said to my mom when we woke up the next day, I was like, Mom, I'm going to tell you something, and I just want you to tell me if this is what happened. And so I told her that I remembered me talking to these little girls. And she was like, yes, Jamie, that's what happened. And even at that point, I don't think I knew that my mom had been there. Just from like, you're in and out of surgeries and so you're um, under sedation and all the pain medicine and with the brain injury, like me asking questions was not really on my mind, right? Right. So I didn't even think about the fact that my mom had been in a car behind me and then it hit me and I was like, oh my God, were you there? And she was like, yes. And so that's what made me lose it and... She said, Jamie, I know that that's hard and it was horrible, but as a mom, I would not have wanted to have been anywhere else. Because Your mom she thought incredible. I was, she is, she's incredible. She really is. Yeah, she is. Like people say I'm a hero and I say she is because we both I, are. she gave me life once and then she gave me life again when she kept me alive. What a beautiful thing. Oh yeah. my gosh, that makes me get emotional. Oh. <laughs> wow, so beautiful. Um, at what point did you find out 
like, first of all, that you had lost a leg and then yeah. tell me when you found out that it was not your fault. So I woke up, I wasn't supposed to, but I woke up the next morning after my accident. Um, I had been sedated and they were supposed to keep me sedated because I was going back into more surgeries, but I woke up and I had no idea what had happened and I'm strapped to this bed and I can't breathe because I'm intubated and I'm so confused and I'm like looking around and coming to and all of these monitors start going off like beeping and all these people start rushing into the room and someone starts yelling you need to calm down you've had an amputation you need to calm down and that's how I found out like that's gonna calm me down really mm -hmm. right I know that's how I found out. I didn't know what had been amputated. Like I could see my hands, so it wasn't that. And I remember just hoping it was like my ear or something, like something <laughs> minor, right? Yeah. But um, no, it was my leg um, above the knee. And I don't think like anything can prepare you for that. No. But that's a horrible way to find out. Um, it's not how I was supposed to find out, but that is. And then later, my surgeon came in with my mom, and we had a conversation. And that's when we went over, like, some of the medical aspects of the surgeries I was about to go into and what had happened. So you were awake for that? For what? For, for the surgeon coming in to explain? Yes, yes. And this was the next day? It was. And you were supposed to stay sedated. So it was an accident uh -huh. that you woke up? Um, I'm one of those people who like metabolizes things very quickly yeah. and it always takes a lot more pain medicine, yeah. a lot more like a higher dosage of things. And like anesthesia is one yeah. of those things. So whenever I go into surgery, I'm always like, okay, I might wake up. So you probably want to give me more, but they don't know that yeah. I went into the hospital as a Jane Doe and they don't know anything about you when right, you go right. in. So... Uh, I woke up and wasn't supposed to, and that's how I found out. Um, but the conversation with my surgeon was amazing. My surgeon is incredible. Um, he's done several surgeries on both of my legs. Um, the left leg really has been the one that's given me the most problems. I've had the most surgeries on this one. But, yeah, losing a leg is wild and it's not something you would ever think about and you can't be prepared whether you're told that in a hospital room or there's people who How know do you ever prepare for that i know no way. there's people who know that they need an amputation and so oh, i guess yeah they can kind of like plan uh when they're gonna have the surgery and they can kind of like take steps to get themselves to that moment i'm i don't know that i could do that but this is what God had planned for me, and you don't need two legs. Like, that's what I've figured out. That is, wow. <laughs> I'm <just> so <laughs> impressed right now. Your positive attitude with this is so impressive to me. Thank you. Like, the fact that you're just like, you know, this is what God's plan was, and here I am, so I'm going to do with it whatever I can do. And yeah. I just, I'm so amazed by that. So yeah. tell me when you found out it was not your fault. So it was the second week in the hospital and I had, um, I had a horrible time sleeping because I would have like nightmares and I, I still thought I would die and I didn't know that like I was going to live. Like I still thought at any moment I could die. The pain was like the worst thing and there's nothing you can do about it. Phantom pain is real. Oh. Um, I had so much pain from this leg that I don't even have anymore, which was terrible. But yeah, I was in a lot of pain um, and I couldn't sleep. And I had um, kind of like a dream um, one night and it was a memory and probably my most vivid memory of the entire night. And it was me at the Jeep talking to the girls and I remember telling them my name my name is Jamie what is your name um and that 
was like comforting in a way. Um, and then I woke up and I was like, I'm going to tell my mom, this is what I just dreamt. And I did. Um, and that's when I found out like the beginning of what I had done that night, which I know it's, it's crazy. Like I know I'm a person who will get out of a car at an accident. I've done it before. I've done it since yeah. then. Um, I'll get out and rescue a dog. Like, yeah. I'm just that person. You're a saint. No, no. I'm just like a helper, you know? Yeah. I feel like if Selfless. I can help, I can, like, I need to do it. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm called to do is to serve. Mm-hmm. And I, I did that night, and I'm glad I did because had I not, I would have sat in my car and watched these two girls die. Like, I, I know that for a fact. So you're still in contact with the mother and she's been uh-huh. so thankful? Yeah, yeah. So they know everything you've gone through now? Yes. Um, I don't know how much, like, the girls know. I've met them once since then. Um, but I'm sure, like, when they grow up, Kelsey will, like, tell them. Because it's a part of their story. And, yeah, I think, like, Kelsey's very grateful as is like everyone else who was yeah. there, you know, I like, just, Oh, I'm picturing that as a mom. I just would feel like I owe my life to you. Like, that's so amazing. You did that. Um, I tell me if this is true. So, um, again, we just met, but like <laughs> I heard all about her and someone was telling me that it was not that long after this accident that you decided to be a professional snowboarder. So, yeah, which makes no sense because I'm from Texas, right? <laughs> I'm uh, so impressed. But it's like, <laughs> my mind is so blown right now. Oh, my goodness. Um, in that conversation with my surgeon that I had the very next morning, um, he was telling me, like, the medical stuff, the surgeries we were about to have. And I was like, I actually don't care about any of that. Like, you're going to do your thing, but I need you to know that I'm an athlete and I'm a dancer and I'm a model and I work and I go to the gym every day. Like, I live a very active life and I cannot live my life in a wheelchair. So I need this to go okay, right? Because I want to walk again. Like, I'm telling him what's happening, right? Like, out of my mind. that fire. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm a snowboarder. And my mom, who's, like, standing in the room over to the side, she, like, <laughs> looks at me. She's, like, okay. And she just, like, thought it was the drugs. Like, <laughs> Jamie's clearly out of her mind. Like, <laughs> you're not a snowboarder. But I told him I was a snowboarder. And he was, like, Jamie, you're going to be able to do everything that you used to be able to do. Prosthetics are amazing. And you're going to do a Spartan race with me. And I was, like – this is not funny. I'm not a runner. I am, do not want to do a Spartan race with you. I just lost a leg and I'm going to be in a wheelchair and you think I'm going to do a Spartan race with you. And he was like, it's okay. I'll carry you if I have to. Like he's telling me all this and (laughs) he's amazing. Yeah. Dr. Stahl is the best, but I'm in that moment thinking this crazy Spartan guy is about to go into surgery with me. Like, because I'm not a runner. Like that's not me. I hate running. (laughs) And I was like, great, this crazy dude. And then I was like, you know what? That's who I want in an operating room trying to give me the best life and best outcome possible is someone who's a Spartan. Like, I'm like, yes. So in that moment, like I told him I wanted to snowboard again. And I had snowboarded years, years ago. Uh, I loved it. I did it in Breckenridge. Did it for a whole week. Absolutely loved it. I was a terrible skier, so I switched. (laughs) And I just wanted to be able to snowboard again because it was something that I love. And I didn't live close to the mountains. And so um, I didn't have, like, a lot of opportunity. But I set that goal there to snowboard again. And then I went through all my rehab, all my physical therapy, like, telling everyone, I'm going to snowboard. I'm going to snowboard. And on the 10 month anniversary of my accident, it was actually my birthday. I came to Park City and I snowboarded again at the National Ability Center. Holy cow. Yeah. 10 months after yeah. the accident? 10 months. So not even a full year. No. And my Holy left leg cow. was still fractured. Like, I, wow. It, yeah, it's crazy. Um, I was just that determined. Wow. And so I did it and I met my goal and, 
I was so excited. And then the head coach of the team at the National Ability Center, he was like, hey, have you ever thought about doing this competitively? And I was like, no, but maybe now. And so I moved to Park City right after that. And I've lived here in Utah ever since. And last year was my first competitive professional season as a snowboarder, which is not the life path that I had for myself, but here I am. Oh, wow. (laughs) I am so, wow. I'm just so impressed. I've said that like 30 times, but who does that? Like, you're just- I don't know, me. (laughs) Yeah, that is so incredible. I just can't even like, I don't know. I feel like I'd feel sorry for myself and I would, you know, be like making excuses for myself and you just got up and did stuff. I did because a lot of people do get stuck in that victim mentality and they feel sorry for themselves and they ask God, like, why did you let this happen to me? I'm a good person. Like, why? But when I found out what I had done, which was save these girls, I couldn't ask God why me because I knew why and it was to save them. And that's why all I lost was a leg because you can live without a leg. And that's the price I paid for two girls' lives. And that's okay. Can I ask you something then? Mm-hmm. So you've talked about God a lot and you've given like uh-huh. credit to him and, mm-hmm. and you haven't complained, which is such a beautiful thing. Like we all should be more like that. Um, is there part of you, it seems like, tell me if I'm wrong, but is, is there part of you that almost feels thankful? Like it, it just yeah. seems interesting that you've right. given so much credit. I think it's so great. I, in the very beginning, had to have a real conversation with myself and ask myself um, how I was going to get through this, and I chose gratitude. Every day, no matter how hard it was, I was grateful for the fact that I was alive because I was so close to not being alive. And so that's the first thing every day I was grateful for, that I woke up and even in the hardest days where I couldn't really come up with something positive to be grateful for, I would make something up just to train my brain that practice of gratitude. And so every day it was three things that I'm grateful for. And I would pick them. I would exaggerate things. I would find the silver lining. I would look so hard. And so every day I've done that and I still do that. And I have hard days still. We all have hard days. But I think if you can practice gratitude um, and realize that some people don't wake up and some people don't make it home, but God's allowing that. Be grateful to God for everything, even the hard things, because they teach you a lesson. I've learned so much in this. And I would say that my life on this side of – that near-death experience and losing a leg, I'm a better person because I found my purpose in life. And it's to help others. It's to give a message of hope. And I'm definitely grateful for God picking me. They say that he picks his strongest warriors for his toughest battles. And I'm very honored that God picked me out of everyone to do this. What an amazing attitude. Holy cow. Like just (laughs) the fact that you're so grateful for something so hard that I'm just thinking, wow, what an example and a light you are to so many people. If more people had that attitude, I can't imagine what our world would be like just being grateful for the challenges and not having the victim mentality. Yeah. You're incredible. Thank you so thank much, you. Jamie, for being here. No, thank like, you. You are more incredible than even what they were saying. I'm just so <laughs> impressed. And thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you. Thank you.